Hi, I'm Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, home of Good Morning Girls, and we are reading through the Bible cover to cover, and we are about to finish the book of Genesis. And just this week on the blog, we were talking about forgiveness, and a really important question was asked by a reader. She said, I have forgiven someone who has hurt me deeply, but I don't want to have a relationship with them. I don't think it's safe. And so I'm confused because I believe I've forgiven, but wouldn't I want to have a relationship with that person if I truly had? I think that's so important to ask because there are people who have hurt us time and time again. And we're afraid to extend forgiveness because we think if we do, that means we have to have a relationship with them. But what that means is that we are equating forgiveness with reconciliation, and they are not the same. You see, forgiveness is what God calls us to do because at the, on the cross, he died for our sins and he forgave us of all of our sins and now he asks that we forgive others. And so, forgiveness is a character quality that a Christian should have. But, we are not reconciled with God if we do not repent of our sin. So, we are not, um, yeah, we are not reconciled if we do not repent of our sin. So, in the same way, there cannot be reconciliation with this person that has hurt us if they do not recognize what they've done and they do not apologize. So that is why sometimes we will forgive someone we know in our heart and in our mind that we've forgiven them, yet we feel this separation, we feel this broken relationship with them, this lack of trust and this inability to let them into our lives. That is because you have not been reconciled. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you haven't forgiven. It just means there's another step, and that step takes two people. It depends on that other person. And oftentimes, that reconciliation may not come in our lifetime. So, I want to look today at Joseph. Because he was wronged by his brothers, you know, sold into slavery, and then ended up in the prison. And we see, though, after 13 years of suffering, because of what his brothers had done to him, he names his firstborn son Manasseh, which means, It is God who has helped me forget all my trouble. We see here that God has helped him to go through his afflictions and sufferings, and he is ready to forgive his brothers. But then in the very next chapter, here come his brothers. He has forgiven them, but in verse 24 it says, He turned away from them and began to weep. He is in pain. Yes, he has forgiven them, but what they have done to him, it hurts. It hurts to look them in the eye. And then it says, Then he turned back. And he spoke to them again, and he, and he begins, he gets control. He turns away to cry, and then he turns back to his brothers, and he's like, okay, we got to get back to work. Time to fill their sacks with grain. We see this happen again um, in chapter 43. He, uh, Benjamin now, his real blood brother who was born of the same mother, Rachel, is standing before him, and look what happens. Deeply moved at the sight of his brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for a place to weep. He went into his private room and he wept there. After he had washed his face, he came out and controlling himself, he said, serve the food. And they served his brother's food. So we see standing before him, Benjamin, and he is so moved that he has to run. He has to go find a place to just cry. No, it doesn't mean he hasn't forgiven them, but the consequences of what his brothers have done has caused him a pain that's going to last far beyond his forgiveness. If you are suffering from consequences, it doesn't mean, those tears don't mean you haven't forgiven. It means you're human. It means it hurt. And yet we see both times he has to get self-control. He has to pull himself together and do the next thing. We can't spend all of our days crying over the pain that others have caused us. When we forgive, there's going to be a, a, a part of self-control that God gives us so that we can go forward, so that we can face today and do what needs to be done. And then in chapter 45, we see one more time. Joseph cries, and this time, wow, it's strong. He says that Joseph, um, it's chapter 45, verses 1 to 3, says that Joseph could no longer control himself before all of his attendants, and he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. And so as he is about to reveal who he is, his weeping is so loud that the whole palace can hear it. Joseph was in pain. He cried multiple times, crying because of the hurt that someone is, is um 
has caused us and grieving doesn't mean we haven't forgiven, but it does mean that we are hurt and that is normal and it's okay. It's okay to weep because it does hurt. And so I just want you to be encouraged with that. We see Joseph's tears and yet we see Joseph's forgiveness. And I want you to be encouraged as well to offer that. I know the depth of your pain may be great, but remember what Christ did on the cross for you. He loves you so much. This is what's best for you. It will eat you from the inside out if you do not forgive others for the hurts that they have caused you. The depth of pain will be so much deeper if you hold on to bitterness and resentment and grudges and try to plan revenge. And so I encourage you to extend that forgiveness. And then pray for reconciliation, that the others will see the wrong that they've done so that you can have that in this lifetime if that is God's will. Walk with the King.